Welcome back to a new episode where we will be creating a full portfolio with a cool hover effect on the cases. Right now we're done with our homepage, we created a navigation and a full screen background image with a parallax effect and a drop down button and whenever we click on the drop down button we will be scrolled down to our surfaces and if we scroll down we created a video section and we also created a footer. I don't want to waste any time and get right into creating our portfolio. The first thing that we need to do is to create a new file inside our HTML tutorials folder. Right click on it, let's create a new file and let's call it portfolio punctuation mark HTML and be aware that the extension needs to be .html otherwise it won't work. Let's hit enter and we created our portfolio page. But if we go back to our index.html we need to reuse two pieces of code. We want to reuse the header, so let's copy, well, everything from doctype until the closing header tag. Let's copy it and let's paste it right inside of our portfolio. And we also need the footer. So let's go back to our index file. Let's scroll down and let's copy the footer. And let's paste it inside our portfolio. Let's save it and let's, well, go scroll up. And let's click on the portfolio button in our header and you can see that we've been redirected to our portfolio page. Now the first thing that we need to do is to create a header and paragraph. So whenever a potential customer lands on our portfolio page we want to introduce them to our work. So in between our header and footer, let me zoom in and I don't need the sidebar for now so I can zoom in more. Well in between our header and footer we need to create a div with a class called container-portfolio. Let's hit tap, hit enter. Inside our container-portfolio, we need to create a h1. Since we're on a new page, we can actually use an h1. And well, let's write down, I'm a dedicated web developer. And once again, my main purpose of this course is not writing content, but it's about designing a page. So right below our h1, let's create a paragraph tag and let's write down Lauren 20 and hit tab. So we create a dummy text below our header. So let's save it. Well, this doesn't look good right now. So let's go back to our portfolio.html and let's create a new div and let's give it a name of portfolio dash items and hit tab, hit enter again. Now every item that we have or every portfolio case that we have needs to be inside a div. So let's create a div opening and closing tag. And we want to create an image that is clickable. So let's create an enter tag by writing down A and hitting tab. And inside our enter, let's create an image tag. We need an image, but let's go to an external source. So pixabay.com. And well, let's scroll down and I will choose this picture. Let's right click and let's click on open image in new tab. Well let's go to the image and we can actually copy and paste it inside the source. Now what we could do is to copy paste our div two more times so we have three blocks next to each other. Let's save it. Let's go back to our browser. Let's refresh it and well the output doesn't look good right now. So let's go to our style sheet and let's style it. Well, let me add a comment first because we're working on our portfolio. And the first thing that I want to style is the container where our portfolio header is placed in. So let's write down punctuation mark container dash portfolio. And we want to, well, let me show it to you. Align the header one and the paragraph in the center. So we need to set the width equal to 80% and the margin needs to be equal to zero auto left right because we want 10% to the left, 10% to the right. So let's text align everything in the center. Well, this went wrong. So let's save it. Let's refresh it. And I want to place my navigation a little bit further away from the header. So let's say that the padding is equal to 100 pixels, top bottom and zero left right. Save it, refresh the browser, and this looks good. 
we already created a global h1 so what we could do is to say punctuation mark container dash portfolio space h1 and what we want to do is to only change the color so let's set the color equal to black save it refresh the browser well i made a typo because we don't need a hashtag right in front crawler save it refresh the browser and this looks better well let's also add a margin of zero pixels top zero right 60 bottom and zero left save it and i want to create a little bit more space between the h1 and the paragraph just like this now for the paragraph we want to style the font size a little bit bigger so what we could do is actually copy the container portfolio h1 paste it right below of it and let's replace h1 with a p and let's change the color to gray so 666 instead of margin let's say that the font size is equal to 22 pixels save it refresh the browser and this looks good what I want to do now is to focus on our portfolio items. So let's go to our style sheet and right below container portfolio, we need to style punctuation mark portfolio dash items. The first thing that we need to do is to set the margin equal to zero auto because we want to style them in the center. We also want to create our grid styling. So let's set the display equal to grid. And I want to create a three div layout, but if you actually want to create a four grid system, feel free to add a new grid template column. So let's write down grid dash template dash columns. And let's set the value equal to one fraction, one fraction, one fraction. And if you want to add four blocks next to each other, right after the last one FR, hit space and write down one FR. But I will focus on three right now. We also want to create a grid gap because we don't want our items to be placed right next to each other. Now let's say 3 EM. And well, in order to set the margin equal to zero auto and text align everything in the center, we actually need to say that we want to text align everything in the center. Now let's save it and let's test the output in the window. Well, it actually works, but the images are too big. So let's go to our style sheet. Right below our portfolio items, we need to write down punctuation mark portfolio dash items space IMG. And well, let's set the width equal to 300 pixels. Save it, refresh it, and let's inspect the element for a second. Because well, it's pretty cool whenever you hover on the diff, you can see how much space is left around the image. So I want to make it a little bit more bigger. So let's say 500 pixels, refresh it. I think this is a little bit too big, yes. Well, let's say 400, save it, refresh it. Well, 350 must be all right. Now that we have created our grid system, we can actually start working on our hover effect. Because right now we can create a pretty nice portfolio, but we don't have any hovers effect over the image. And to add a hover effect, we need to go back to our portfolio.html. Let's scroll down to our portfolio item. Well, the first box. And let's give the box a class. Well, let's say class is equal in double quotes to HVR box, which stands for hover box. Right below our image, let's hit enter because we need to create a new div called punctuation mark hvr box dash layer and this basically is the background color effect so what we want is to change the opacity to black so let's hit tap hit enter again and inside our hover box layer we need to create a new div called hvr hit tap enter and after the hvr so the hover let's hit space because we want to give it a second name second class name of box dash position. What we would do with hover box position is basically all the content that we will be displaying whenever we hover over a div. Well, what we want to do whenever someone hovers on it is to show a H3. So inside our class, let's write down H3, hit tab, 
And what we want to add here is the kind of work we have done for our client. Most people, and me as well, don't do one specific thing. You can be a designer and a web developer, and you can make logos, apps, and so on. So I always think it's very good to specify explicitly what kind of work you have done for a company. So in between our H3, let's write down web development. And right below our H3, let's create an H4, where I want to write down the company name. And in my case, I will write down my own. So right now we're done with our HTML. So let's save it and let's go back to our style sheet. And let's go right below portfolio items, the image. And let's write down punctuation mark HVR box. What we want to do is to set the position equal to relative. And the display needs to be inline block. There's also something that we haven't talked about and that's the overflow. So let's set the overflow equal to hidden. And what this basically does is it clips the content if necessary to fit the padding box. We also need to set the max width of 350 pixels because it needs to be the same as the image. For the div layer that we created, I want to style the punctuation mark HVR box first, space, and then the HVR box dash layer. And this will be the dark overlay that will appear whenever we hover over a box. And what we could do is to set the opacity equal to zero, because if we don't do this, the effect will not work. What we want to do next is to set the position equal to absolute. And whenever the position is equal to absolute, we can set the top equal to zero, the left equal to zero, the right equal to zero, and the bottom equal to zero as well. We also need to set the width equal to 350 pixels again. Now for the background, I want to set the value equal to a function called RGBA. And whenever you create a function, you need to use parentheses, semicolon. Inside the parentheses, we're going to define different RGB colors with opacity. We don't want the background color to change to a specific color. So we don't want it to be red, blue, or green but we want to change the opacity so whenever we hover over it, the image is still well likely visible. We want to set the RGB equal to zero, so no red, another zero, because we don't want green, and another zero, because we don't want blue as well. But we want to use a new value called alpha, and the alpha parameter is a number between 0.0, .0 and 1.0. 0.0 is fully transparent, and 1.0 is fully black. Let's set it equal to 0.6 to be somewhere right in the middle. We also want to change the color because, well, we have a black background color and we want to change the font size to FFF, FFF. And I also want to add a transition. So let's write down transition, which is equal to all objects. I want to slide it in at 0.4 seconds and I want it to ease dash in dash out, space zero seconds. Now for the hover effect, we want to style the punctuation mark hover box colon hover space punctuation mark hover box dash layer. And the opacity basically specifies the transparency of an element. So let's say opacity equal to one. So how low we go, how wider the background will be. If we re save it and refresh the browser right now, you can see that our effect actually works, but our text is placed right at the top and that's not what we want. And that's the only thing that we need to style right now and that's the content. So right below our styling, let's write down punctuation mark hover box space punctuation mark hover box dash position. And let's set the display equal to inline block, save it. And this is actually, well, this class. So the H3 and the H4. And I set the position equal to absolute because whenever we set the position equal to absolute, we can set the top equal to 60% and the width equal to 100% and 
and we want the items to be aligned to the left. So let's say left 50%. If you have followed the episode where we place a scroll down button at the bottom of our page, you know that the position that is equal to absolute and the left equal to 50 will never place the element in the middle. What we need to do is to set the transform, hit tab, and you can see that two other transforms are created. And these are for different browsers. And we need to set it equal to a function called translate, parentheses. And inside the parentheses, we want to say minus 50%, comma, minus 50%. Save it. Refresh the browser. We made a typo because it doesn't need to be hover space box, but it needs to be hover box test position. So let's save it, refresh the browser, and while the items aren't placed right in the middle, so let's go back to our style sheet. Now let's set the top equal to 50%, refresh it, and this looks actually good. Well, since we added the class, we need to go to our style sheet and inside the hover box, I set the margin equal to zero auto and the text align to center, save it, refresh it, and this looks good. The last styling that I want to apply is to our H3 and H4. So let's write down punctuation mark HVR box space H3. And I want to set the font size, well, to a pretty small one, so 12 pixels because this is the kind of work that we have to done for someone and we don't want to be that big and it definitely doesn't need to pop out. Let's set the color equal to FFF FFF and let's set the margin equal to zero. We can actually copy paste it and let's change H3 to H4. The font size needs to be bigger, so 20 pixels. And we also want to add a padding of the top equal to six pixels, right zero pixels, bottom 40 pixels, and left zero pixels. Let's save it, let's refresh the browser. And while well, the items are placed a little bit higher than in the middle, so I actually think that we need to set the top equal to 60 pixels since we changed the font size. Refresh it. You can see that the output is pretty cool because whenever we hover on a box, the background image is still visible but an opacity is applied and a piece of text is visible on the screen. This was it for this episode. And in the next episode, I want to create a zoom in effect whenever we hover on an image. If you do enjoy my content and you want to see more, leave this video a thumbs up. And if you're new to this channel, please hit that subscribe button.